Amplitronic. Listen to the difference. Hi, my name's Rob. I'm a system design engineer here at Amplitronic, and today I'm going to demonstrate how we lay a low spill phased array to a Loopworks design document. We won't be permanently installing the cable here. It will just be laid temporarily above the carpet using a single core cable. Your installation could be carried out using flat copper tape underneath floor finish, direct burial within the concrete, or single core cable in conduit at floor or ceiling level. You may be doing a similar simple rectangular meeting or teaching space, or a much larger complex shaped space. While the complexity of design or actual cabling method may change, you should still follow the same procedure to interpret the design, mark dimensions and ensure you are following the current wiring path while carrying out your installation. The first thing we have to do is orientate the design document to the room and ensure we know which way it should be installed. This can be critical to achieving the correct performance and spill control. You should be able to identify the origin point, shown as 0, 0 on the document. These are the axes where all dimensions are then taken from. In this example, we can see the door on the drawing, so we can work out that the drawing should orientate with the 0, 0 point in the corner near the entrance. Once we've identified this location, we can start measuring and marking out. We suggest marking and installing one array at a time to avoid confusion. It can be a good idea before starting to check your room dimensions are accurate to the design to ensure there haven't been any changes on site which stop the design fitting in the room. Depending on the loop orientation, the X and Y may be swapped around in and above the table. Whichever dimensions are shown above the table are the measurements from the wall to the common start and end of each loop segment. Using a tape measure, we can mark these dimensions from the bottom wall which is at zero on the Y axis. In this case, I am just laying some tape as an indicator on the carpet to show the two lines for the start and ends of the loops. If installing on concrete, you may wish to mark the full line with chalk or similar. Now we're going to measure from the front wall, the wall which is zero on the x-axis, and mark off each position in the measurements table, going through the list of start and end points of each loop segment in order. Here we are using tape to mark each position and putting an arrow to indicate the direction of current flow from the design. This will help us follow the correct wiring path later, which is important to ensuring the loop works correctly. Depending on your install surface, you could mark these positions out with marker pen, chalk, spray paint or any other suitable method. It can also be useful to use red and green coloured markings to help differentiate the measurements for each array. It's important to measure down each side of the room to make sure the wires are laid straight and square across the room. You may wish to use a laser or chalk line in larger spaces to give a true straight line between measurements. You can see on this phased array design that the crossovers are shown slightly offset along one side of the room. In order to help with the laying out of the cable, you might want to show the slight difference in offset during the measuring out. Here I am just marking a dotted line through the middle of the tape at each marker, so that I can show which wires should be laid above and below at the crossovers. As a check at this point, it can be useful to trace the loop path by foot, to make sure it matches the drawing. The arrays are shown as complete circuits in the design with no start and finish point, as the breakout can be in any position. During the first fix, you should install feed cables between the amplifier location and a point close to the loop location. This run should be kept as short as possible and use either twisted pairs or star quad cabling. There will normally be a junction box either in the floor or wall at the point where the feed cables from the amplifier come into the room, and this is your start and finish point for each array. Here we are going to start and finish from a position near the front centre of the room where we've got our amplifier sat on the table making sure to leave enough slack to make necessary connections. While laying out, we have to pay close attention to the crossovers or overlaps between each loop segment. These define the polarity of each loop and are critical to making the design work. This is where the arrows on the floor can help us check our working, but we should also double check that each pair of segments has a crossover between it on one side of the room and a gap on the other. 
If installing with copper tape, you would follow a similar process putting a piece of adhesive tape on each corner to hold the design in place before covering the whole thing with warning tape once finished. In larger rooms, you may also wish to put pieces of tape spaced along the main cable runs to keep them fixed in position whilst installing. You should make sure you keep the design printout orientated the correct way in the room and follow it precisely. Any mistakes during this phase can be very difficult to rectify later on and can result in areas of low signal or excessive overspill outside the room. Make sure to clearly identify the tails of each array after installing to make sure the feed cable and amplifier connections are made correctly. In standalone rooms, the polarity and phase assignment of each circuit is unimportant but becomes critical in spaces such as divisible rooms or theatres where multiple amplifiers are used together. It is still good practice to match this to the design, so any problems are easier to troubleshoot. Now we've installed the first array, we are going to repeat the same process for the second red array. We will mark it out down each side of the room and lay the cable in the same way as before, making sure not to disturb the cable we've just laid. As well as making sure the floor is completely clean and clear before starting the install, it can be useful to try and avoid other trades working in the area while loops are being fitted, so the layout isn't disturbed. Where tapes are being laid under carpet for example, these should be installed as late as possible before the carpets are fitted, to leave the minimum time with the loops directly exposed on site. Once installed, it's really important to test the loop circuits. Here we are just going to check the resistance of each array which should generally be between 0.2 and 5 ohms. The limits vary per amplifier and will be stated in the handbook. Also, the expected resistances are normally included in the design documentation. It is also useful to test between the two arrays to make sure it is open circuit, and also from each array to ground. You may see some reading here, but it should be greater than 10 mega ohms. It can be a good idea to get these tests witnessed and signed off by your customer as a record of correct installation, in case of any damage by other contractors later in the project. On site, it could then be a long wait until the amplifier is connected and powered up, but if possible, it's a good idea to carry out a quick test. Assuming your previous cable tests were OK, the amplifier should start and pass all of its self-diagnostics. This is the first opportunity to ensure the actual cable path was followed accurately and check the performance of the system. We're just going to output some pink noise from the built-in test tones in this C-series driver, so we have a constant audio source going through the loop. With Loopworks measure, we can now do a quick walk around the room to ensure we are getting good even field strength within the room. We are not looking for standard compliant levels here. We are just making sure there are no big peaks and troughs as we walk across the space. You can refer to the design and the expected performance as an extra check to see that the consistency of signal in the room matches the shape of the graph on the Loopworks design report. As this is a low spill design, we can also check that the signal is dropping off quickly outside the loop as expected. You can see how to do a full commissioning test and generate a PDF report showing system compliance in our other videos. Thank you for watching. If you've got any further questions, please contact our support team. We're available on live chat on our website, by email at support at ampatronic.com, or the phone number shown on screen. Ampatronic. Listen to the difference.